Um, well, you know, the answer to that, if anybody's listening here and they see it, the answer to that is a, is a, is a spray can, a paint spray can. Just spray the sensors. Well, of course, and I mean, you know, 10 years from now, the drug dealers will have a little robot that will run up to that robot and spray paint over it. And now we're just... That could be done now already. You know? no, exa- but, well, yeah, exa- but drug dealers have robots. I, I was really... Sub- I mean, just to mention, sorry to break in, but uh, at a, a one, when I was giving a talk last week, there, were, there was an admiral there talking, and he told us all sorts of things that I had no idea about, about the use of um, robots by criminals. You know, there are drug dealers in Colombia who have got little remote-controlled submarines and little autonomous submarines. So they're sending them out to the ship off the coast and delivering drugs to them, and they can't be detected. Would you believe that? No, I mean, but that's exactly what we're talking about is, is where does it end? Once we introduce these into the public, I mean, and next the, the, the submarines will have little torpedoes on them or will explode when somebody touches them. Yeah, but I, I think that you immediately, someone should stop people. I mean, immediately, with this guy who's doing it, you need to stop the first guy. You have to stop it now. You can't have robots roaming around with cameras on because what's going to happen is that robot's going to wander around with the cameras on and it's going to see some crime that's going to catch the public imagination. It might be somebody killing a kid or something, and then they'll be everywhere. Exactly, exactly. You know, what happened in the United Kingdom, there were not very many of these CCTV cameras around, and then there was a really high-profile case, the case of little Jimmy Bolger, who was attacked by two big kids who murdered him, and they were able to pull CT- CCTV footage out of various stores and piece together who had done it, and it was two other teenagers. They didn't prevent them from doing it, and as far as I know, they've never prevented a crime yet. But they caught those kids. It was really high profile, and what that did was it made the population accept these things. No, exactly. I, I I understand that. I mean, I've read all of the. They've done numerous studies in your country about the CCTV cameras because we've been having that debate as well here, and they they've conclusively shown that they don't reduce crime. They don't help solve crime. If you really want to reduce crime in a neighborhood, you put up lights. You put up more lights, yep. and that statistically does reduce crime. But but I think you've hit on a key point here: is that the, the 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 politicians that are running the society they will seize on that one story, and then the yep. media you know performs its function of just blowing it all out of proportion. And all of a sudden, you have the public just demanding their own servitude to, towards these technologies exactly. and systems. Yes, exactly. That 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 is that is that is the fear about it. Just just demanding your own, and you'll you'll soon have these things going. You know. God knows where, they'll be everywhere you, you look. And it will happen in the United States as well. There will be something tragic that will happen, and a robot will save the day, and then you're going to see your police with them everywhere, and everybody will be saying, applauding them and, and saying, good job, and they don't realize that, you know. Because one of the, thi- one of the things that, that prevents too many laws is that a law really, to be successful, has to be enforceable. You know, you can't have a law to stop me throwing down gum unless I live in Singapore, then, you know, people will tell on me. But in the United States or the United Kingdom, you can't have a law up against throwing down gum or litter. But you can if you've got cameras everywhere. And once you've got, you know, there's artificial intelligence out there that can do face recognition. So you don't even need people monitoring it. You could start having machines that just look to see if people had thrown down gum and take a record of that person and um, arrest them on the spot. They, you know, hold up your hands or we'll shoot you. Exactly. You know, the camp, well, I've even heard that y'all have talking cameras now. And, yes, uh, we do. you know, that there's the hover drones that fly around with the cameras and it, they have tasers on them. You know, so, yeah, what happens, you know, you're, you're at the park after dark and, the, and it just identifies you and automatically yeah. arrests you. You know, you just fall down on the ground. You don't know what happened. You wake up in a prison cell the next morning. But you see, the thing is, you, you put in the mouth of the public these simple little expressions like, and this is spread throughout Britain, and, and it, it drives me crazy. Well, if you've got nothing to hide, why would you worry? Well, you know, I, I, I draw my curtains, you know, I pull my curtains across in my living room at night. I'm not committing crimes, but I want privacy, you know. I might want to pick my nose or scratch my butt, and I don't want everybody looking at it. And, and what I say to people is, well, you know, here's another way to look at it. You want to use cameras to prevent all crime. Here's the way to do it. Make sure that everybody's house has cameras in it. Wear a camera on your head all day so that everybody you talk to can be viewed by camera. That w- in that way, we could prevent all crime. Nobody could pass drugs to each other or anything. Do you want that? 
But yeah, I'm, well, I'm, you know, Nazi Germany was almost completely crime-free under, under Hitler's rule. Exactly. Uh, I mean, the, the question becomes, you know, are, do we want to live in a free society or do we want to be absolutely convinced that everyone's being pure all the time? And I mean, that just goes into whole levels of Orwellian, you know, control. And in every society, it's always been shown that the controllers, the managers are the most corrupt class. You know, unfortunately, statistically, police have the highest level of criminality in any profession. You know, that's not that I'm against the police, but it's just in any control system, the, the controllers and the people and the nature of the people that are attracted to it, you know, if you are a really smart criminal, where are you going to go in such exactly. a society? But you bring up a good point, though, that the one thing that Orwell didn't kind of predict was that we do, the good thing about cameras is that we get the opposite happening as well, don't we? Oh, well, that's get true. Police that's... being surveyed. There was that Rodney King affair. Um, we had a, we had something much more trivial than that in, in Sheffield, where I live, at a nightclub, where, where a young girl uh, was, was, uh, had black eyes and things uh, from the police said that they, this policeman, it was a young black girl, or you call them, uh, you know, African-Americans now, we still call people uh, of color black people in this country, and we had a young black girl who came out of a nightclub, and the police said she was resisting arrest, and she said that she hadn't done anything, and they just attacked her. Well, you know, it just so happened that the nightclub had CCT footage that showed that they had grabbed the girl and punched her with no provocation. So CCT footage can, can play into the other way around, can't it? Well, it, it can, and we've documented it's a lot. It's not worth of, having it, you know. Well, but, uh, you know, a lot of times, I mean, recently, and this is, this is a kind of a counter-argument to that, is that uh, the, the cameras always seem to malfunction or get turned off right when the incident happens and that's and that's you know i'm not saying that happens all the time but that has been a, a reoccurring theme here in the states you know about half the time the camera gets turned off it turns back on you know the most recent one is literally almost an exact duplicate situation the woman's in custody in the police station she's yelling at the the police officer and being belligerent he walks over he turns off the camera and when the camera comes back on she's on the floor covered in blood and he says she slipped and fell yeah. So I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I'd still yeah. rather it, I'd still. I get you. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've done that yet, um, because the, the the CCTV was was in private hands. You see. No, definitely. And they I, didn't I, notice it. They hadn't noticed it. Well, your efforts are definitely Herculean, sir. I know you. I know you have to go here in a, in a, in a minute. Um, so you're just you're traveling all over the world right now. I understand. I mean. Speaking I'm out on this in subject? Talk and then Amsterdam, but I'm um, back in England and then off to Ireland. So, um, but I'm trying to get this uh, out and spread about as much as possible, and that's why I really appreciate programs like yours that will air it properly. Um, in the UK, I've done three minute interviews, really. Well, you know, I mean, I have to admit, other than the alternative media here in the States, you know, the electronic Berlin Wall functions very well uh, across the pond as it was over here. Uh, I have to admit, sir, other than the alternative media, there really has not been a lot of exposure, and on the Internet, a lot of exposure of your warning, which is, you know, very frightening to me. Okay, that's good. And, and just let me leave you with one thought. You know, I, I often think Orwell wrote in, in the 30s, I think, 1984, and the world he predicted, you know, we're not, we're not there in the same way, not quite there in the same way, because he kind of stopped it from happening in many ways. But... The base he was writing from, there were no CTV cameras. There weren't even video cameras around. I would wonder what a young Orwell would write now. Well, uh, let me let me counter counter give you a counter. Is uh, there's some great speeches by Aldous Huxley where he talks about the development of the scientific dictatorship. Yeah. And, I mean, you can read about uh, Bertrand Russell also talking about the scientific dictatorship. And I would say with the developments in propaganda. Um, linguistics, understanding neuro-linguistic programming, and the application of a lot of Bernays' principles, you know, the father of modern advertising, I, I really think you could argue that we are already beginning to live in scientific dictatorship. It's quite possible, you know, that it might change. Hopefully it will change. Well, I believe... We leave it, it on that note, then. Yes, sir. I believe in the human spirit, and I know you do, too. I can, I can tell that just from speaking to you. Uh, sir, I really thank you for joining us today, Dr. Sharkey. I, I, if possible, maybe in like six months, we can check back in with you and, and see how, how this has all been developing in your world.
that would be really great. If they haven't got me with a hit before then, I'll be glad to come on your show. Thank you very much. Definitely, sir. Godspeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, that's the end of the recording.